All right. Uh, welcome to this tutorial series. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial series on building a um, this Google Books API search thing. <laughs> uh, we're going to be using React and Redux for this tutorial, as well as um, some other libraries as well. But the main two will be React and Redux. Um, so I'm going to show you um, the packages that I'm using um, for this tutorial series. I'm going to assume you already have React experience, uh, maybe maybe Redux experience as well. Um, so yeah, React. Um, yeah, so we're using React, obviously. Um, you can, if you don't know React, then just go to the website, look at the documentation, it's really pretty um, it's pretty good documentation out there. Um, so I'm also going to be using Redux as well to manage our state, uh, to keep all of our state in one place, which is actually one of the three principles of Redux, single source of truth. Um, I'm also using a library called Immutable.js as well. Um, Go check it out. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna really go into any detail about mutability and things like that. Um, I would maybe do a Google search for mutability, immutable objects in JavaScript. Um, but again, I'm gonna assume the people watching this video they're, you know, intermediate to maybe even expert level developers, engineers. Um, so I'm also going to be using the Lodash library as well. Uh, it's just a um, utility library, um, and honestly, like I, I love this library. I love using it. Um, there's a lot of functions here. It keeps you from having to repeat yourself. It follows that dry principle: don't repeat yourself. There's all kinds of like functions and stuff in here that are very useful, um, such as. Like, for example, I can grab all the keys easily inside of an object using the, um, I think, the keys function here, which creates an array um, that has all the keys that are associated with said object. Okay, so there's a lot of useful, a lot of useful functions in here. There's, um, all types of stuff. There's stuff that checks for a plain object, checks if it is an object. Um, there's even a nice clean is empty. I mean, you, you could do this without this library, but I like using it because it's very simple to use. Um, it looks very elegant in the, in the code. Um, I just like it. So, all right. So, we're obviously going to be using an API for this. And excuse me. Um, the API I'm going to be using is called Google Books. Um, basically, what we're building is going to be something similar to this. You just come to an input box and you type in something. Um, and in this case, it's not going to be showing this little drop down here. What it's going to do is it's going to display a bunch of books underneath of an input box. So if I type in um. Zelda. It's pretty nerdy. <laughs> it's gonna have on our um underneath of our text box, there's gonna be a bunch of listings like this right underneath of our input box. So it's gonna be doing an inline search. Instead of having to click that button and go to the next page, we're gonna make a fetch call to the Google Books API and we're gonna display those results right underneath this input box here. Alright. And the documentation is here. Um, we're going to be using this URL here. Uh, we're going to be making a git request, HTTP git, to grab the uh, the books using this, um, this URL right here. And we're only going to be passing in the queue for the query. Uh, the query is whatever we type into the input box. So I'll show you that. Um, and I'm also going to be passing in an API key as well. You don't have to do it, but I'm going to do it 
if you don't have the API key, just understand that you might run into a um like a a, a fetch or AJAX call limit, like a um like you might get locked out of using the API for a bit if you make too many calls. Um, so I, the way I found around that was to actually go into my Google account and actually um, create an API key. Um, I forgot where I did that. Um, so I created an API key and I passed it into, I passed it as another parameter in this get request. Okay. So what are we going to use to make our fetch calls? Now we're not using jQuery. We're not using jQuery at all. There's no need for jQuery. Okay. And I'm not going to import jQuery just to use Ajax. Okay. So we're going to use be using uh, a polyfill for the fetch API called isomorphic fetch. It's this guy right here. Um, it's very similar to the fetch library. It's just a polyfill. All right, so we're going to be using this to make our request. To uh, we're going to be using this to make our request, right? It's very easy. It's very easy to use. It's not hard at all. It's very easy. Okay, so we're going to use this library to make our API calls. In addition, um, we're going to be using a um, this uh, Chrome add-on. We're going to be using two Chrome add-ons. We're going to be using the Redux DevTools to check the uh, um, our state tree. Um, when you're using Redux, you're, there's the idea of keeping the state in one place. In this case, it's the state tree. So we'll be using this um, this plugin. It's already for me. It's already added to my Chrome. So I don't need to do it here. And also, if you're a React developer, this is outside of Redux. If you're a React developer, um, I'd highly, highly recommend using React developer tools and add it to your Chrome. It's very useful. You can search for components. You can check out the props that are being passed into those components. You can do all kinds of things. You can check to see what event listeners in, are on your components. It's it's very, uh, very easy to use. Um, I would highly recommend using it. So, a couple other things before um, I conclude this intro video. Um, I am going to be using um, an NPM library, NPM, Node Package Manager, uh, called Class Names. Um, again, you don't have to use it, but I'm going to be using this to join my class names together instead of having to concatenate using the plus sign. Um, and. I'm also using this React Redux Starter Kit. Um, now there's a whole bunch of them out there. I'm just using this particular one. Um, but again, you don't have to use it. You don't have to do. You don't have to use it. But you know, you can use other ones or you can build your own. Um, so uh, sorry for the noise. That's my uh, my iPhone going off. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's about it. Over, um, you know, going to be building for this video here. Um, just it's just going to be an input box, and uh, it's going to have below. It's going to have some results. In future videos, um, actually, I'm going to keep adding on to this. Um, I'm going to be adding a um, like a favorites button, which actually we will add a favorites button, but it's not going to do anything. So on each of the results, we'll have a favorites button. When you click favorite, you can add it to a list. And that list will actually show up right next to the input box. Okay. So we'll do that later on. And then maybe we'll have another video on filtering the results. So what we can do is we can set up some filters on top of the input box. And then maybe when you click it, we can filter those results, the ones that you get back, by something. I don't know. You can filter by whatever parameter you want. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to filter the results that are stored in the state tree. So, um, but that's for a future video, alright? So, uh, that's it for this, uh, this first part. In the next, next video, we're going to be actually starting the coding process. We're going to be putting together our reducers. So, uh, enjoy the next video.